I'm Eric Green, partner at Green & Sklar, the boutique tax law firm and founder of the tax resolution training organization, Tax Rep LLC. Welcome to another edition of Tax Rep Network Podcast. I want to thank our sponsors, Tax Help Software and Call ENQ. We've only taken podcast sponsors of products that we actually use at Green & Sklar's. Call ENQ is what allows us to call the government and get into the IRS in under three minutes. Tax Help Software is what we use to pull transcripts. It's our intelligent ordering where we track what's going on with our clients overnight. So in the morning, we know of anything that's happened on the IRS side and also what we use for our resolution forms, our offers, installment agreements, uh, uncollectible powers of attorney, all of that. Our sponsors have special offers for you. If you want to check them out, go to taxrepllc.com resources, and TRN podcast page to view the sponsor offers. Enjoy the episode. Hey, everybody. It's Eric, and thanks for joining me for this week's Tax Rep Network podcast. I'm going to take the opportunity. I'm not going to have a guest on this week. I wanted to take the opportunity to sort of set the record straight when it comes to an offer and compromise with the IRS. And, and, and actually, this, this goes beyond offers, but I, I'm, I'm going to focus on offers, but you can really say this across the board with the IRS. There's a theory or a, a feeling that the people, and, and by the way, you're not wrong if you think this, but, but th- there's a sense that people at the IRS who this is their job, They're an offer and compromise specialist. They work in the centralized offer and compromise area. There's this feeling that, or sense that, those people understand how to do offers. They don't. And I want to dissuade you from assuming that whatever they, whatever nonsense they send back to you when they reject the offer. That, that somehow that's the end all be all. So what prompted this sort of, I want to call it tirade, but my, my, um, my soapbox for today was I had somebody come in, um, come in, you know, we're still sort of on the tail end, at least, you know, we're those of us who are vaccinated of the virus and they sent me their offer that was rejected. They did not appeal. And I looked at the offer I think it's a good offer. I think the RCP is correctly done. Um, So I called one, it's one of my tax rep members and said, um, why, why, you know, why was it rejected? Well, you know, they, they went into sort of this explanation. I said, can you send me their tables? The IRS, when they, when they come back to you with an offer and they're suggesting that you um, amend or they're going to reject the offer, they, they show you what they're calculating. And their calculations are nonsensical. And, and so it, 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 they, they didn't accept their own standards in some cases. I mean, it, it's a mess. So I just called the member back because they wanted me to have a call with them and their client. And I, I really don't want to do that. So I, I said, you know, I don't want to do this because I'm going to ask you some very difficult questions. I agree with your offer. I think it's a good offer. You you, you applied the rules properly. They 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 took a, a wrong standard. And by the way, they applied it over the C said the taxpayer could so couldn't full pay. They're rejecting it anyway. Um, why didn't you appeal? And they said, well, the offer specialist basically was so certain that it, it, it was it was a reject. I assume that they you know they're an offer specialist. So I really decided, I thought about this, and um, we were going to do a different topic. I was going to have a guest on. I pushed it off to next week. Um, what I, I want to make clear to you, for those of you who've decided you want to do this, all right? And, and look, when I, and you can go back and listen to the earlier episodes with Brent Robertson. When I dove into this, I decided I was going to be the very best at what I did. You know, I, that I was going to master Whatever it is I did, I, I'm going to be the best. I don't want to just sort of float through life. I want to build a really valuable, I, I want to make a lot of money. I, I want to have a reputation. This is what I'm going to do. I want to excel at it. I want to feel proud at what I do. 
So I, as you probably have guessed, rolled up my sleeves and dove into this area of practice head first. I'm all in on representation and practice and procedure. It's my thing. You would think that government people would do that too, but they don't. That's why they work for the government. Now, I don't mean to, I, I have friends at the IRS. I'm not trying to offend them or somehow suggest that they're lesser than they're not. There are plenty of people at the IRS who are very good, who work very hard to help people and help our government and make our system work. And they do a very good job of it. But I want to dissuade you from this idea that whatever the IRS auditor says or the offer specialist says, certainly what the centralized innocent spouse people say, because we all know they're worthless. We, as I've told you, get more between 93 and 95 percent of our offers accepted. We're on a streak from 19 and 20. We have all 22 of our 22 offers that I have filed accepted. I haven't checked Jeff's. But you have to understand, many of those get done up at appeals. Right. We have to take it to appeals. Um, just this week, I had an email exchange with some pot folks high up at the IRS because my members and other people probably are calling, you know, ACS. And I told you 250,000 over the collection statute, set up a streamlined agreement. They're having the people at ACS tell them, no, you got to pay down below 50,000, which by the way, is the, is the cutoff for the field, the revenue officers, not for automated collections. So I, I, we got this so much all over the place. I actually emailed some of the executives said, you know, this is what we're being told. I went and looked at the Internal Revenue Manual. The 250 still seems to be there. Is Have you guys changed policy or is this a training issue? And they emailed back and said, no, Eric, we're sorry. It's a training issue. We are hiring hundreds of new people. Clearly, they're not being trained properly. We'll get the word out. So one, just know it is still 250000 over the CSED as of July 1st, 2021. But the, the lesson here is don't think because somebody works at the IRS that they know anything about taxes or anything, frankly, about even their own area. Don't, don't, don't fold because they said so, all right? With audits, most of the auditors I wouldn't hire, okay? They don't know what they're talking about. They're taking a very aggressive position. They're out to try to stick the taxpayer. You're going to appeals or we're going to get the 90-day letter. We're going to file in tax court and get to appeals that way. Offer specialists, we're going to appeals. Do not, do not just fold up because they said so. And if you happen to be a taxpayer listening to this, it, you may have to sit there and, and make sure that your rep has has uh, has some has a, uh, a spine, right, or that their spine stays upright when they're dealing with the IRS. Okay, if you're really looking for someone, go out the tax rep directory. You have more than 300 of, of of people I have trained, many of them, who do nothing but representation out on tax rep directory. It's taxrepdirectory.com. Go check that out there. You can find somebody in your area, or frankly, anywhere in the country that can help you, okay? Just uh, the lesson for today, the lesson I want you to take away before the 4th of July weekend is, you know, and I'm not gonna say it's all about independence, whatever. Just because the government says so, it doesn't make it so, all right? Don't assume that the IRS person at the other end is trained, that the IRS person at the other end cares, or that they're gonna go out of their way to help you or even fix it. You can respond saying, we believe you're wrong. Here's the proof. They'll reject it anyway. And people get upset. Why, why did they reject it? You're assuming that they're a passionate, sympathetic human being who cares. They're not. Now, some of them are. Some of them are good people. But what I teach my tax rep members, when we're dealing with an audit, we're going to respond to the audit. Or you're going to, like, let's say you're going to appeal the denied offer. You have to assume, and this isn't true, but just assume if you assume this, by the way, you will get better outcomes. I assume the person at the other end is a moron, is not going to go looking through the file, and is not going to go out of the way to help me. In many ways, I'm laying the groundwork to elevate it to management. So when I respond to an audit and I'm appealing, 
Now you might say we're, we're, we're appealing, you know, I, you know, we handed over documents, they rejected the documents. So you send in a letter saying we're reject, you know, we're, uh, um, we're appealing this. We disagree with this. What I do is saying in the closed audit report, they made this adjustment. We disagree with this. We provided documents that showed the taxpayer had in fact spent the money or whatever enclose our copies of those documents and we send in the documents. So why do I do that? And some of my members have pushed back saying, well, Eric, it's already in the administrative file. You're assuming that the appeals officer is going to be energized enough, probably working from home, by the way, that they're going to now try to order the file, get into the file, go through the file and find the information that helps your client. They're not. Anything you want them to consider is in the package. I know you've given it to the, uh, uh, the auditor. I know you faxed it to them again. Assume that the appeals officer isn't gonna see it. Give them everything you want them to see. If you can make this dummy proof, enclose one packet with tabs, cross-reference, I highlight, I use um, stickies, make this as dummy proof as possible, you will get better outcomes. Do you have to? Maybe, maybe not. But do I have to then have the appeals officer say, well, I looked at your package and I don't see this. And now you're back and forth trying to show them where it is or then get it to them. Just give it to them. Everything you send to the government, if you send it in as a complete package, all put together, it's, it's almost impossible for them then to ignore it because you've given it to them. If you ask them to go look for it, they can ignore it. And they're not going to go looking for it. With the offer, the rejected offer, we disagree with this. Here's the real number. Here's why. And here's the backup again, Mr. Appeals Officer. Make it dummy proof. Make it a complete package for them. You will get better outcomes. Do Number one. Number two, do not be afraid to go to appeals. Sometimes these auditors are like, oh, I see this is going to appeals. Great. Get the, get the hell out of my office. Right? You're taking up space. You're attracting flies. All right. I got I got a life to live. I'm going to appeals. Wonderful. There's not if you've never been to appeals, there's nothing to fear about appeals. In fact, I'd rather deal with appeals. They're better trained. They're willing to cut deals, you know, horse trade on certain issues. I can work things out. Appeals with offers can actually bend the rules a little bit. If you can have special circumstances, they will consider it. I would much rather deal with appeals. Now, that doesn't mean we always, you know, slam dunk everything at appeals. They're not just going to fold up and agree with us. You need to do the work and you need to have the, you know, the facts that support your case. But don't be afraid to go to appeals. If you're going to give them everything they need in the package you file, I understand it may be somewhere in the administrative file. They're now working remotely. I think many of them are not coming back willingly to the office like the rest of America. So when you have to fax something to them, make sure you give it to them. Make their job easy. The way that my former senior partner, Bob Percy, who's since retired and passed away, Bob told me once, you want to take the appeals officer and lead them by the nose where you want them to go. Don't, don't make them do work on your behalf or your client's behalf. Do it for them. When you write up your cover letter, you're almost, you almost want to try to write up their decision. You just make their job easy. If you make their job easy, you will get better outcomes. All right. So before 4th of July, a couple things. Number one, oh, as an aside, know that the 250000 over C said for a streamlined agreement with automated collections is still the rule, right? Still in the IRM, still the rule. If you call someone and they tell you 50000 it's a training issue. Ask for a supervisor. If you have a real problem, Email us at tax rep, and I can put you in touch with somebody, uh, one of the executives who can get that fixed. Two, don't be afraid to go to appeals. We spend most of our time taking our cases to appeals, all right? The jerk auditor or the idiot spe offer specialist you're dealing with, same ones we deal with too every day, but we get great outcomes. One, because we know what we're doing, we've trained to do what we're doing, and we're not afraid to take it to appeals and elevate it. Number three, when you're going to go to appeals, Make sure your package is complete. Everything is there that you want them to see. If you've given it to them 10 times, you're giving it to them an 11th time. Don't 
assume they're going to go out of their way to find it or help you. They won't. Now, maybe you'll get the good person that does. Don't assume it. And if you don't assume it, you'll get a better outcome. It's less fighting later on. Okay. So with that, oh, last thing. For those of you who are interested, if you're not on tax rep directory, go get your listing. We're now marketing this. I've already gotten one criminal case and one offer and compromise through the tax rep directory. It's been up for about a week. All right. So if you can go to tax rep directory, grab your listing. All right. Start marketing your practice. We're getting very busy right now. IRS is now ramped up. They flipped the switch now on automated uh, enforcement. We're getting very busy. Okay. But just as my, the, the big takeaway, don't assume that the IRS employee knows what they're talking about is, or is given good information. The reason you're getting paid the big bucks, right? The reason you're getting paid the big bucks is because you know what you're doing. If you're not a tax rep member and you feel kind of like you're hanging out there on your own, we'd love to have you join us in tax rep. That's what we do. We're your help desk. We train you. You can do this. There's no reason you shouldn't add $100,000 to your bottom line in 2021. And maybe in 2022, you won't have to work a tax season again. Anyway, that said, everyone have a great 4th of July. I hope this is helpful to you in your practice as you press forward. And everyone stay safe and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. If you haven't already subscribed to the Tax Rep Network podcast, Go to taxreplc.com, mouse over resources, and click TRN Podcast. You'll get an account loaded with all the episodes, our sponsor offers, and transcripts of recent podcast episodes. Thanks for listening, and thanks again to our sponsors, Call ENQ and Tax Help Software. See you on the next episode.